What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. So I did a couple of days ago, I did a video on the new meta. It's not new, uh, it, but it is what works in the game, right? A lot of the top players are doing it. A lot of division one players, division two players, and pretty much everyone is kind of playing that long ball counter, turnover in possession, a load of interceptions, create a mosh pit and not easy passing lanes in the middle of the pitch. Um, stay away from the out wide areas and just very much centralize your play, right? Centralize your breakdowns, your interceptions and your turnovers of possession in that middle kind of area of the pitch, right? So if you've missed that video, go back and check it out. Pause this video here now. And go back and play the video um, if you want. But anyway, we're going to go into the game plan here and we're going to show you an anti-meta. Now, this anti-meta is not going to be, you know, a five at the back. It's not going to be kind of anti-football. You're still going to be able to break down most opponents and have a bit of fun and create a lot of opportunities. But it's just going to be kind of fighting fire with fire with the meta, right? So the meta is all about kind of centralizing your play. So the anti-meta is, for me, all about offering something different, right? If I come up against a guy that is playing meta, I know that if I can stop his press and if I can turn him over enough in possession, I will get chances, right? I always dread coming up against a guy like this that has a formation like this because, number one, it clears my head that I know I'm going to be in for a game and it also kind of, like nearly upsets what I'm trying to do on the pitch if I'm a meta player. Now, I obviously play as a formation like this. This is like my Road to Glory style team um, where I have one, you know, tall striker such as Collar or Drogba or Lewandowski and then I have somebody that's able to get the ball into him such as Kustic or somebody like Carlos that's able to spread ball in. Alexander Arnold on the right, maybe. Um, somebody that can play right mid and right back like Robertson on the left, left mid, left back, right? So that's going to feed into what we're trying to do here. But the same rules kind of apply for the meta and the anti-meta three at the back very much centralized defensively solid and three up front where you're having Kubo Collar and Pellegrini this time Pellegrini is going to push up when he has the ball dribble pass shoot you can have Messi there you can have Neymar you can have Pedri you can have Modric you can have pretty much anyone that you want whole player is key uh, if you are using a player that you want to have very like kind of like direct running lines right but we will cover that in a further video this is more about setup tactics formations that that kind of stuff right so um we're going to show you an example where am I going to go yeah we're going to show you an example here okay um of this now this is from a match that you're going to see right where I have set up as a 3-5-2 and I'm switching between sub tactics which we'll get to in a second which is more traditional meta uh, when we don't have the ball and we're going to be switching back to this in a second right so the whole idea of this is to spread the ball out so in this formation here that you see where we've got Marcus Lorente and Kostic I have got Carlos and Hakimi playing that role, that they're going to be basically wing backs, right? You can play wing back formations in the game at the moment, but this is effectively what I am doing here, right? So you're going to see here with the breakdown of the play, right? And I'm actually going to slow this down just a fraction, right? Um, speed, slower. I'm going to slow this down a fraction, right? So I'm going to lose the ball. I'm not really set at the back, but my center back is going to get it. He's going to lose it, win it back, lose it again. And I'm kind of set here at the back with two on two, two on one with Mbappe, right? He's still going to have to come centrally. He's not going to recycle the ball back out. We cover the gap. We get a nice tackle in. We're going to clear it. We're going to boot it. We're going to lose possession again here in the center of the pitch. Now, from here, you can see that I'm pretty much set up with Vieira pressing, Declan Rice sitting, Tommy Yasu, Marquinhos, and... Um, Van Dijk as my tree or Maldini with my tree at the back right with Declan Rice sitting in the pocket there as this play develops you're going to see that he's got one with the ball Alonso he's got two three four five players here right as this kind of like progresses you'll see I get the block with the passing lane but then I mess it up again here with a, a bad kind of turnover of possession terrible from me he gets the ball back again now he's in an even better position because he's got three out wide and I'm scrambling to get back, right? But this is what this formation is all about. It's about soaking up that type of pressure. And yes, I'm losing the ball. It's hard to play out a little bit because possession is a little bit busted at the moment. But this is what the anti-meta you need to do with it, right? So you'll see here, I'm waiting for him to make mistakes. I'm still super solid at the back. I can't get the ball out. This is what happens a lot of the time when you're in that mosh pit. This happens, you know, every couple of games where you literally just can't get the ball out. You're getting loads of blocks, interceptions. Again, here, there are half chances, half turnoffs. You try clear it, it bobbles again. So if you find yourself that you're in this position, right, 
you should try this formation because it's very, very solid at the back, especially if you are used to losing possession like that, which I am. I, I always I always going to get games like this playing this formation, right? Where are we? Okay, so we're back here, right? Again, we're going to have this breakdown of play. We're going to pause it here. He gets, this is the area that I dread, and this is the area that he wants to get it into. And this, when most players get the ball in this position, they're going to turn and shoot, or else they're going to, one touch with Alonso, here's what he probably should have done, run on, he's going to turn and shoot, and it's a, it's a half chance. It's a really a half chance, there's not much in it. Now, from here, you can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players back, plus Carlos out. I've only got two players up, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to not boot the ball up, even though I'm going to be playing a different type of formation. If Collar is up there, yes, I'm going to boot the ball up here to Rashford, who I'm hoping will win it. That obviously works better with Collar or Drogba or somebody, but we're going to lose possession again, and then it's rinse and repeat again. So this is kind of where the game can kind of ping pong and yo-yo for a while, where he's getting on top of possession. It's all about interceptions without getting clean possession. Now, the big thing is, when I get, when I get my formation here set, and when I get my break... You're going to notice on the bottom of the screen here, Roberto Carlos's position. And you're also going to know that Hakimi's going to be spreading it out, okay? You're also going to notice my run from my CMF or DMF uh, box to box, which is Vieira. And that's where play styles come in. And I'm going to recycle the ball in here. Touch to Rashford. Nice little dribble. Now look at the options I have. Look at the overlap I have here without any input from me. The overlap from Roberto Carlos here where my cursor is, right, outside of Sun is going to be where I'm targeting. So I've got a two-on-one break over here and a three-on-one break effectively, right? Ball comes in. Who do I use? I use Vieira, who's made the run with the AI true. Simple touch, simple kick, and then there's two players there. And Carlos, who is playing as a left wing back, is going to get the ball. Now, as I said to you, in this formation, Kostic is going to be playing that role in my role to glory. But that's kind of what it's all about, right? So as I said, when you are playing this, it doesn't mean that you're limiting yourself to just sitting back. You're not playing a five at the back. You're not playing that um, anti-football, right? But it does kind of, once you get a break against somebody, somebody is going to have a lot of possession against you through the center, but it's going to be very hard for them to score because of this setup, because you've got your three bricks at the back. You've got Declan Rice, who we're going to show you here, is going to be playing with a couple of... Um, Tactics on him, which are individual instructions. We're going to have defensive on Declan Rice, and we're also going to have deep line on Declan Rice, or else man marking or tight marking on one of the players when you're in-game. Anchoring is going to be on Costage because we want to keep the spread there and not shove him in too tight. As you saw with Carlos there, he's going to stay wide and only cut in towards the goals at the last minute. And then counter-target is going to be on one of our fast center forwards, right? Uh, that doesn't come need, need to come deep. Now also, as I showed you in the last video, lads, with the meta video, it is all about a bit of mind games as well and having that tactical noose or tactical kind of like higher thinking when you're in a match, when you need a sub-tactic and when you don't. So sub-tactic can be activated by holding down on the D-pad and you'll see it flip up and flip off um, as it says offensive and defensive, right? So you'll notice that when you hold the D-pad in game, it'll say defensive and offensive when you hold it back again. I always use a sub-tactic on every formation. Even if I'm winning games 3-0, I still switch to my sub-tactic every now and again to switch things up and pull the AI out of possession and out of position, right? With blocking lanes and passing lanes and all that. We're just going to go for a very simple 4-4-2 here. Very simple 4-4-2. We're going to shove Marquinhos and Rice into that central defensive midfielder opposition um, so that we can get more balls, more blocks, and use their player skills to do that. Dombele and Pellegrini, one hole player, one destroyer or box to box. It doesn't really matter what player you use there. You can use a creative playmaker if you want to make a sub. And then you've got Kubo and Collar up front. If I'm playing this, I'm probably going to sub out Collar when I use the sub tactic. And I'm probably going to go low ball. So I can obviously play somebody like Messi or I could use somebody like... Uh, Lewandowski or Son or somebody like that that's a little bit more shooting friendly that has got high finishing skill right um, but it's all going to be about with this setup getting the ball out wide Marcus Llorente can play both positions he can slot back to a right back if you want I mean look if you are struggling with goals and you want to use a sub tactic I'm not going to criticize if anyone wants to use a five at the back here like this it's a very simple setup with this one that you can use um, with Marquinhos just slotting into that central midfielder role you could also, if you wanted to keep your wit, you could do this with Koundé out right back and put your two boys in there with Declan Rice who can play that formation. You could do your five or else you could do your four there um, and keep your formation there with your three CB and Koundé there. And then you have your box to box down depending on if you're chasing the game. So there's a lot you can do with the sub tactic. But 
as I keep as I keep saying, if you want to play anti-meta, even though you're using the same tactics and formational setup pretty much as Diego Simeone's default one, which is to get the ball central, you still have those options out wide, which does make your opponent think, right, he's going to try and cross a few balls into collar here. What can I do to stop it? So it just stops the game from becoming centralized and very box to box about getting on top of the interceptions. Because most of the time, if like if I'm playing against somebody that is doing that, Yes, I'm fighting fire with fire, but I'm not going to let somebody that plays meta and plays very, very quick paced ping pong passing and is used to losing the ball, getting the ball back aggressively, losing the ball again, getting the ball back, losing the ball again, and having that for the whole 90 minutes. I'm not going to let him play on his own terms. I'm going to sit in the ball. I'm going to spread it out wide. I'm going to do switches. I'm going to depend on my players to make runs up the left like you saw with Carlos there. So that is just something to keep in mind. So I wanted to do a video for anti-meta. This is how I play. This is my setup for my role to glory. And let me know if you want to see it in real time. Come on over to the live stream. We do, will do any more videos. Any questions anybody has, get in touch in the comments below. We'll be back quite soon. Until then, peace.